What's your vision? You have to ask the question, who told you? Who told you that you can't win in life? Who told you that you'll never break out of that poverty? Who are you listening to? See, you've got to know that God has a great plan for your life. You're not purposeless. You're not here by accident. You're a unique individual with giftings and talents that God put there on purpose. And we've got to get you to that point to see it. Welcome to Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Drenda Cassie. We're glad you joined us today. Let me just ask you, in the midst of all the turmoil, have you lost your vision to win? Wow, that's, that's possible, right? I mean, a lot of negative things flying around, but vision doesn't disappear because vision creates its own energy. In other words, vision, Drenda, I always say it can drag you to success. It motivates, it's passionate, yes. it has zeal, it overcomes ob obstacles, looks past the circumstances. And we want you to have vision, mm -hmm. understanding that that's still possible. In fact, we had a partner call us. They had a multi-million dollar deal that just went down the tubes. They thought they were discouraged. We said, hey, wait a minute, let's not let that thing slide. We, we can still get this back. Let's pray about it. And uh, a month or so later, I got this text. They were so thrilled that the, the deal came back. They had to fight through it, get some things done, but they got the deal and they were so excited. Listen, don't give up on your That's dreams. Right. Just because things are happening, they're still possible. That's right. Don't give up on your confident expectation, your right. vision of great things happening. Gary just recently did a teaching on vision. This is the year of impossibility right. and the year of possibility for you. And let's go to that teaching. I know it's going to inspire you. Well, welcome. I'm Pastor Gary and Pastor Drenda. We're here just to welcome you to Faith Life Church, and we're going to jump into some things today to help you. I'm not going to get into just kind of a little, little vision talk because uh, there's a lot of great stuff out there on vision, strategies, but I want to talk about running with God, dreaming with God, uh, to do the impossible. That's what we want to talk about. So grab your pencil and paper, your Bible, your notepad, iPad, iPhone, whatever you need, and let's jump into it. Today, we're talking about uh, vision. Now, at the first of the year, everyone gets a piece of paper out. And goal setting, the first thing you do when you start talking about changing things and setting goals is get a piece of paper out and you begin to write things down. But how many know people write things down and nothing changes sometimes? <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a way you can make that happen. We got to talk about that. And I started with this statement, vision is more than written down goals. Vision is what you see. Now, when you write things down, that's what you want to see, but what do you see? You see, what you see is where you're going to head. You'll never rise above what you see. Are you following me? What you see. In other words, right now, you, you see this podium. That's what you see. You can write down, I'd like to see something else, but right now, you're look, you see a podium, right? You see me talking to you. And so, vision is is what you see. You can't change it. It's what you see. But we have to change that. How do we change it from a, being on a piece of paper until actually you see it? Now, here's a big difference. You know, you have goals written down. You get up in the morning, and you kind of, kind of work with your plan. You start making the changes necessary. And it's kind of a struggle, isn't it? You have to kind of force yourself to kind of bend and mold and look, wrap yourself around those things you've written down. But vision's different. You'll get up and work with your goals, but when you have vision, it gets you up in the morning. Let me say it again. Vision gets you up in the morning. You don't have to have a list. You don't need a list of goals. It is you. It is what you see, and it is passion. It is zeal, and it gets you up in the morning. You don't have to force yourself to get up and get that list out. It is you. It's what you see. And we've got to get you to that point to see it, right? Right? There's a process, a spiritual process to get that done. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. That's things hoped for. That's a picture. Faith is the substance, substance. We've got to bring this into substance. Ephesians chapter 3.20, now to him who's able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to the power at work in us. So is there a limit? God is able to do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine. So what comes first, imagination or asking? Help me out. You can't ask unless you imagine, all right? 
And you'll never imagine until you learn what I'm going to teach you today. It's called desire. Desire. And you would think that, well, that's easy. Desire is easy. Not necessarily. Let's talk about it. Let's say you need a car. Let's say, okay, we, we, we need a car. Car is a generic word, and you automatically think of, you know, wheels and an engine and a car. But when you think of a car, what happens is you immediately, that's a desire. De desire gives birth to imagination. Now, imagination is not blurry. It's specific. So if I said, I want you to picture the car or imagine a car, you can't imagine a car. You imagine the car, the brand, the color. And you begin to imagine what you'd like in it, what color it is, and different models and different aspects of it, correct? Imagination is never blurry. Thus, asking is never blurry. Let's just ask God for a car. It won't show up. If you can't see it, the Holy Spirit can't bring it. So desire, we need a car that's desire. Desire births imagination. Dreaming, okay? Seeing it in your, in your imagination. It all begins with desire. And Drend and I, uh, we have a financial company that for uh, 96 and 1997, we had the largest office, the number one office out of 5,000 offices worldwide. 96, we launched the church, and so I got busy, and of course, I kind of assumed that we would not be able to keep number one status because all these other guys, that's what they do full time. They're in business, you know. I've got a lot to get done, so I can't possibly keep up, and so we did not make number one. And we go to the yearly conventions. We have multiple vendors. One of the vendors, you know, had these great conventions, so we went to the convention. We sat there for 18 years clapping for the top 10. They got a $100,000 bonus check. We're clapping. That's awesome. That's awesome, you know. Let me ask you a question. Did I ever desire to be up there and have the $100,000 bonus check myself? Yes. You're wrong. <laughs> I'm trying to help you with that. Hold on. Okay, let me read the, let me read the definition of desire. Desire's definition is a strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. Did I have a strong feeling and desire to be up there? No, I didn't. <laughs> now, hang with me here. Here's why. I already told you that I already made the decision that I was busy. I was already maxed out. That I thought it was impossible. I already made my decision. Because I already made my decision that it was impossible, I had no desire, strong feeling to get there. What happens is you're sitting there today and without realizing it, you've already said no to a bunch of stuff and you have no desire for it. In fact, people are so beat up in life, they don't dream anymore. Nothing tweaks their desire anymore. They're just kind of getting numb. Little kids, all they feed on is desire. They play make-believe. They imagine, they dream. That's how God, that's the real you, right? That's the language of the Holy Spirit. That's how God operates. But you get so beat up in life, you stop desiring. Well, I couldn't have that. I can't have that, whatever. You just stop desiring. Thus, you don't imagine. You don't dream. Nothing happens. So when I sat there all those years, 18 years, and God spoke to me in the 18th year and said, why aren't you up there? And I was about to explain to him why I was not up there because he called us to pastor this church, launch this church. He says, I want you up there. Now, when he said, I want you up there, all of a sudden something changed. His word brought a different possibility to me. If he said, I want you up there, it's like, duh. I can be up there if God says it, right? And it was only then that I began to actually imagine and seeing myself up there and receiving the download of the plan that got us there. And, of course, we, we did it that year. We did the millions of dollars we had to do. In, we made it that year, got the $100,000 check, did it the next year. So who's the one that cut it off? Who's the one that stopped it for 18 years? I did. Why? Because I thought it was impossible. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing and thanks for watching.